Again, the Camp Hope AME Church, located at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. Of course, my name is Reverend Dr. Michael L. Martin. I am your instructor, your guide here in this study where we're studying to show our self-approval. Workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I thank each and every one of you for tuning in here with us today, and we pray that God will be with us as we go through and study Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. So we ask that you get your Bibles out and let us begin this study. We'd like to thank each and every one of our virtual members, our local members, our covenant members, our friends, all of you out there, for you have supported us in and out of season, and God has allowed uh, you to be uh, his hands, his resources to help us do the mission that he has called us to do. And we just say thank you and thank you and thank you for responding to God in doing what uh, needs to be done that we can continue our broadcasting. Now I'd ask you to go ahead and get your Bibles as I pray and get ready to do our study for today. In again, Joshua, Joshua chapter two, Joshua chapter two. All right, let's go into prayer. God, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you for you are truly worthy to be praised, Lord. Lord, it is you and you alone that we adore, you and you alone that we trust, you and you alone that we know that we are following and that are leading and guiding our footsteps, Lord. Lord, we ask right now that you allow the Holy Spirit to come, come and be a part of this study. Help us bring revelation, understanding, Lord, that we might be better lights, that we would be a voice for you, that we would be all that we need to do, that we can lift up your son, Jesus Christ, and that Jesus will draw all persons unto him. Lord, we just thank you. Bless all the ones that are tuned in, all the ones that will tune in as we study. Lord, to give us what we need. And Lord, if you've done anything in thought, word, and deed to hinder you from allowing this to happen. We ask forgiveness right now. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, Joshua chapter two. Joshua chapter two. And I'll be reading from the NIV version of Joshua chapter two. And it reads, Then Joshua the son of Nun secretly sent two spies from Shittim, Go! Look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named uh, Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hid them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they have come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gates, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flex she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the, on the road that led to the fords of the Jordan and as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before the spies laid down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you have fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the, the Red Sea for you when, when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Shihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, 
whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the life of my father and mother, my brother and sister, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived lived was lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there three days until they return and then go on your way. Now the men had said to her, this oath you made us swear will not be blinding on us unless when we enter the land, you have tied this scarlet robe, uh, cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers and all your family into your house, if any of them go outside your house into the street, their bloods will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell what we are doing, we will release from we be released from the oath you made us swear. Agree, she agreed, she replied. Let it be as you say. So she sent them away and they departed, and she tied the scarlet a cord in the window. When they left, they went into the hills and stayed three days until the pursuers had searched all along the road and returned without finding them. Then the two men started back. They went down out of the hills, forded the river, and came to the Jer came to Joshua son of Nun and told him everything that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. I read to you Joshua chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 24, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let's get right into it. Well, it starts off talking about the spies, of course, are sent to the city of Jerusalem course, by Joshua. Now, Joshua's careful preparation wasn't evidence of faith, faithful, uh, faith was not evidence of faithfulness, not lack of faith. Let me say it again. Josh, uh, Joshua's careful, pre careful preparation was evidence of faithfulness, not the lack of faith. God promised success to Joshua, but those promises were not meant to encourage passivity or inaction on Joshua's part. They were meant to encourage his, encourage his faithful activity. Now, to spy secretly, he sent them out there. It was wise for, for Joshua to send these spies secretly. A generation earlier, the public sending of spies into Canaan ended in disaster when most of the spies returned with a discouraging report of the land and its people. Go as view and the land, especially Jericho, as he ordered. The city of Jericho was relatively close to Israel's plan, uh, cross crossing point of the Jordan River, and it was one of the most secured and fortified cities uh, in Canaan. Um, verse 1b, the spies went to, to who? Uh, Rahab's house. 
Uh, now, it was a harlot, harlot, prostitute. Throughout history of, of Christianity, it has it has embarrassed some biblical interpreters that these two spies went to the house of a prostitute. Some have tried to say uh, uh, Rahab was merely an innkeeper, but the description of her as a as a harlot is in, of course, uh, Hebrews chapter eleven, verse twenty one, and it confirms that she was, of course, a prostitute. And it says they lodged there. The Hollis house was a good place to stay if one wanted to stay anonymous and remain hidden despise, uh, despite the strict guard set over the city of uh, Jericho. Amen. Now let us uh, move on to verse two and three where it talks the king of Jericho seeks the Israelite spies. Okay. Um, somehow the leader of the city, uh, state of uh, of Jericho, learned that two Israelite men had come into the city as spies. Uh, this was of great concern because the city was already on alert, fearful of the Israelites' invasion. Uh, now, when they had heard this, of course, they said, bring, went to Rahab, bring those men out of there. Using either informals or logic, the king of, 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 of Jericho believed the spies were with Rahab and demanded her that they be turned over. Um, the woman took the two men and hid them, Rebekah. Uh, the culture of the ancient uh, Near East had a strong tradition of protecting guests. Even considering this, Rahab went much further than those cultural traditions regarding hospitality. She put her own life at risk for these Israelite spies. This was an act of her praiseworthy faith. As it says in Hebrews 11 and 31, where it is honorable mention, but nothing is said of the lie she told. God laid the finger of mercy on the scars of our sin. It goes on and it says, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. The Bible simply reported that Rahab lied. It does not praise it or excuses it. Rahab faced an ethical um, challenge either Option, of course, was bad. She decided that it was worse for her to betray the spies than to be to lie about their presence there. And of course, it said the men went out. Rahab protected the spies. Uh, her protection of the spies was courageous. Despite her pagan upbringing, a culture and morally uh, comprised um, Compromise profession, she uh, allied herself with Israel and, of course, the God of Israel. Going on to verses 8 and 12, it talks about now Rahab's confession of faith. Uh, the surprising outburst of faith showed that God had a plan in bringing Rahab and the spies together. She said, I know that the Lord has given you the land. God had already been speaking to Rahab in some way, and she had begun to believe in the superiority of Yahweh, the Lord, and the God of Israel. Continue, God continued to speak in the remarkable and unusual way to unlikely people who are seemingly distant from the gospel. Has goes on and says, has given you the land. Rahab confession of faith included recognition of God had promised the land of Canaan uh, to Israel and that he would fulfill the promise. She was God's supernatural work of causing terror among the Canaanites, leading them to be faith hard, faint hearted. Um, 
in her confession, of course, uh, of, of Rahab reported the the people of Jericho had heard of uh, heard and believed the mighty works of God did that God did for Israel in freeing them from Egypt and defeating their enemies along the way. They had heard, struck fear in them because they knew that they were on the way uh, to that particular city. God is in heaven above and on earth beneath, she said. Rahab confessed, confession of faith declared the greatness of the superiority of Yahweh, the God of Israel. Our hearts melted, as she said, about when they heard about what God did and what God is doing. The combination of these truths was overwhelming. Many among the Canaanites believed that they, that the God, believed that the God of Israel was stronger than the Canaanite God, believed that, uh, and that the God of Israel did miracles for his people bringing them out of Egypt, believed that the God of Israel had recently in, in, enabled Israel to defeat the king. And of course, <laughs> lastly, um, had, if they had promised Israel the land of, of, of Canaan, believing these things made many among the Canaanites, lose courage. Lose courage. Verses 12 through 13 is talking about Rahab's plea for the rescue and salvation of her, of her uh, family. Rahab desired to see her family saved, and the effort she made to save their family shows that her love should be noticed as well as her faith. She goes and swear to me by the Lord. This shows that Rahab wanted assurance of her rescue by asking for an oath. She wanted to leave her sinful life and culture and live with God, God's people. Putting herself at risk, Rahab rejected her past identity as a Canaanite and wanted to be identified with the people of God, with Israel. Verse 14 talks about the response of Israel's spies. Our lives for yours, they said. This was a solemn oath made on the lie, on their lives. Rahab and her family would be spared the, the upcoming judgment. We will deal kindly with you, they told that. Uh, this promise was to rescue Rahab and her family from the coming judgment, of course, against uh, Jericho. Verses 15 through 21 talks about the means of Rahab's salvation and, of course, the scarlet red cord. Uh, Rahab believed in the God of Israel, was confirmed by her faith. So what does she do? Amen. As I'm pondering this. Now you got to remember that Rahab's house, or as it says in the text, what was on the wall of the city. Of course, they had closed the door so they couldn't go out the other way. So the only way they could get out was, of course, as she said, she lowered them on a rope. So Rahab believed in the God of Israel was confirmed by her actions when she did this. She protected and assisted the Israelite spies because she really believed in the greatness of Yahweh and the reality of his promise to Israel. And then since she was justified by her faithful words, right? Find, they said, a scarlet cord in the window. This was a signal to the army of Israel that the people in the homes were to be spared. Despite Rebecca's desire, despite her, her faithful dispute of the promise of these spies, she would have put, unless she 
put her trust in a blood red cord cast down from her window. Without the scarlet red cord, she would not have been saved. She had to follow, excuse me, the instructions that she was given. And of course, and she did. She bound the scarlet cord in the window. Uh, though known only to Rahab and to Israelites, this was a decoration of her uh, uh, alliance, um, her allegiance with Israel and the God of Israel. In binding the scarlet cord in the window, Rahab immediately displayed her identity and trusted in the security offered by the scarlet cord. In a sense, uh, Joshua would be a savior for Rahab, but he would be a judge for what? The rest of Jericho. Though known only to Rahab, and of course, as I said, in Israel, this was a decoration, a decoration of her allegiance with Israel and the God of Israel. In binding the cord in the window, Rahab immediately displayed her identity and trusted in the security offered by the, scar the scarlet cord. She also trusted in the ones who made the promise connected with the scarlet cord. Verses 20 through 24 talks about um, the mission accomplished. Um, God secret supernaturally protected the Israel spot light spies. God help uh God's help came to them through, of course, Rahab and by the confusion of their enemies. Um told him all that had befallen them. The two spies made a full report to Joshua, but there was no record of anything they told him. When the spies went back, they told Joshua exactly what happened down to the promise that was made. Uh, they made a full report, but there was no record of anything they told him that was essential to, of course, conquer uh, Jericho. It was encouraging to hear the Canaanites were faint-hearted and hear of the faith of Rahab but this did not give Israel a strategy of attack against Jerusalem. The strategy would come from God and not from the intelligence gained by the spies. The Lord had delivered all the land into our hands. As with the two spies of Rahab, what uh, Gideon heard, gave encouragement through the word of an enemy. The conversation convinced him of the final outcome, thus engaging him to stay with courage. There is no question that we are going to be victorious. The great purpose in sending the two spies was to arrange the assured arranged the assured, excuse me, the great purpose in sending the two spies was to arrange and assure the salvation of who Rahab and her family. She was one that some might consider impossible to save, but God did what seemed impossible. That's what God does. God continues to save those who seem course, impossible, impossible to say. I know that I paused on that last bit, but I was just thinking and uh, pondering and uh, amen, um, just allowing it to soak in. So I pray that you would reread Joshua chapter two, you know, meditate on it, pray about it, let God speak to you through those scriptures. Amen. And of course, we'd ask that you would go ahead on read uh, Joshua uh, chapter 3 as well, amen, for you will be prepared for uh, next week. Now, remember tomorrow, 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 tomorrow at 
uh, 630, Deaconess Thomas, we bowed there on the phone line, so we want everybody to go out there with her, pray and worship and be one out there because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Of course, we ask you to tune back in, amen, with us on Sunday at 9 o'clock, amen, and of course, church at 10 o'clock. We look forward to hearing from you, amen, through our email, through letters and cords, amen, and we just thank you for all that you are and all the support that you give. Of course, our motto says, come grow with us as we transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds as we prepare for Christ's return. God bless you. I love you. And see you next time.